Hey everyone, Stegger here and welcome back to the small city of Dalefield which we're currently building in City Skylines 2. So in the past episode we finished that one off by expanding out this suburb here called Harlem and we've now grown a little way in this direction from the downtown which is centered around here and also grown out a little bit out this way. So I'm thinking to keep the city balanced. Uh, now might finally be the time where I start building across the river. So this is probably going to have a fairly gridded layout. My inspiration for this is the small town of Featherston in rural New Zealand, not far from the capital city of Wellington. This is a railway town that was established alongside the railroad in the 1800s, uh, that is the town of Featherston anyway. But for what we're going to be building in City Skylines, I'm more thinking it's an expansion of the existing city, but also the railway which does run through here will also be an influencing factor on how the new sub suburb, town, city, whatever you want to call it, grow originally. I'm thinking in the larger scale of the eventual city that what we build on this side will be sort of its own city in terms of administration and stuff, if that could really be reflected. I'm not too concerned about the police and fire and garbage and things, but I think it would be sort of telling a bit more of the story as how a lot of cities are divided up into different administrative districts in real life so i want to kind of reflect that like here's the main city and here's like a twin city on the other side of the river and then you'd have uh, separate sort of suburbs that have their own governments and stuff as well depending on how big the city gets it might be suburb down here uh, suburban area all along uh, up to this cliff on this side of the city plus out this side plus uh wherever you can build to up here but that really depends on my availability of time to actually build that so i don't want to over promise anything just yet and now on to actually building the road layout for the suburb i wanted to use the river as the defining feature that sets out how the grid is laid out so you just saw me there quickly delete the existing road we're gonna build this back out but I first wanted to get it out of the way and work out uh, how the grid is going to be laid out as you see it took me a couple of attempts to find an alignment that I was happy with for these roads and here I'm just starting by building out blocks with the road being 192 meters long which is uh allows for 10 deep zoning cell i think uh plus the road so it's like 12 cells total uh and then just going through here and on the in-betweens just adding in a parallel road in between and then i decided that actually because the main road would be going in the way it's going i didn't want to have too many intersections on the main road and would rather have them on the slightly smaller roads so decided to realign the grid on that basis and here just repeating out the same thing again and again i think i'm about to skip through a lot of this as i show about half the road layout on here and then we skip over the rest and move on to uh, work on the main road. I also upgraded some of the roads to have trees on them, uh, that being my kind of envisioned minor roads that are less important with a major road, every other parallel road for the roads that are closer spaced together, if that makes any sense. And here just uh, coming out with this four lane road and extending that through the suburb and then coming through and upgrading with the tram tracks. I was also having a bit of difficulty working out how 
the road angles interact but that can be something i come back to at a later stage and here we're just placing down a few tram stops so that i can extend the tram light out into the suburb so now that we've got the road layout set out the first thing i want to do in the suburb is place in the train station as i feel like this area has a bit more room to fit that in than along the existing train line as there's quite steep hills alongside it that would make it a little bit awkward to fit the train station especially since it's got like six tracks i think but first we need to place down the rail yard i'm just gonna place it over here here for the sake of unlocking the train station. I think for the rail line though what we're gonna do is bring it straight through and try and line it up with one of these roads as part of the grid and then have the railway line run parallel to the grid for a little bit. The first thing we need to do anyway is expand this elevated bridge so that's what we're gonna start off by doing so if we take it from there then so if we go all the way across then i do want to come down a little bit so i'll do that gradually as we cross this river so if we go down by 0.6 and then worry about the effects of any roads later i think potentially this one can just be straight up deleted as it doesn't really go anywhere anyway so if we continue this out, then we're left with a problem here in that it wants to intersect right at the point where everything else wants to intersect. And to me, that seems a little bit unsafe. But what we could do is delete these roads to undo all my progress that I've done in getting this layout set up and come through here with the train line. So if we go there we don't actually need this to be going downhill across here so what i'm going to do is retry that from the beginning so it wants to build a bridge there so i wonder whether you can build the road back under it i'm assuming no but seems to allow me to do it so that's perfect so we have a nice viaduct that's very flat and copes with all the terrain differences here. I think it's going to be a matter of putting the train station on this block or I want to have it as close to the middle of the town as possible. No, I think we're going to have to go on this block here somehow. So if we situate it in about the middle of this block, then that'll give some space for the roads to, or the train lines rather, to merge back up prior to the road crossings. So if we take this, then there is a massive height difference. So if we do this and then adjust the railway line to make it work in with whatever the height is of this because that 7.2% grade or whatever it was is not going to work for what I'm wanting anyway. So if we come back to here and see what we can do here. So to 0.6. So if we come to here okay it's doing something funky so what i'll do is i'll take the shift terrain tool i just want to make a really small elevated thing here not that height but somewhere at about the height of the train bridge thingy then take the level tool come around here and then slope it back to the train station so that's a bit of a cutting we might even be able to fit a road bridge over that without it being a significant engineering feat so if we go from this point here to there that is almost perfectly level and then if we take this road back through and come up and over if possible we do that and then I want another node here and then I want to take it over and down and see what happens. 
That achieves what I wanted, but there is a bit of a slope on this side, so we'll see if we can even this out a little bit by rebuilding this road. So I ended up messing around for a bit and managed to get an overpass at this road. I might tidy that up a little bit later. So now we have a bridge that comes up and over the railway line here little side street that I fit in just to fill up the space and then an underpass under here and then it leads into the train station and the next task is now taking the complex curve tool coming forward to about here coming up to say there will do and then the t the curve here is way too generous that it doesn't like that fact. So if we go about 10 degrees and see if that uh, snap to angle as well, there's a lot of snapping that I'm turning off here. And then turn all this back on and go to here and then go through. So now we have the wider city's first train station and some roads around it. And then with this road, I might delete it here. And what I'll do is I'll bring this one on it at the ground level. One, two, three. Bring it a little bit back. I want to not have this be a super generous curve as it would have been insignificant road to otherwise have a larger curve. Then from about this point, I'm gonna make it so that, so if we, maybe one more, that will allow for an intersection on that road. And then we have it, we have the road to access the railway station and it actually seems to fit quite well and then you'd have the uh, smaller road going along here. Yeah. I feel like this road could even come out to fit up with what grid system would otherwise be there so I might actually change that again and then we can take this through to here and get rid of all of these awkward bits and pieces. Let's start zoning up around this area. I might use the European commercial buildings. So we'll go through and zone in some European commercial buildings. Just do three by whatever depth it wants me to do. And then actually from this road here, might do something different and unzone that one. And then put a pedestrian path through this little gap that I made. So if we take that one there, and then if we zone up on top of this, I think we'll find that there is quite a height difference. My question is, can you elevate these just on the keys? Yes, you can, because that way I can come through like that without necessarily having to make it overly complicated. And it's probably not the most accessible path as it's quite steep, but it certainly gets people to the train station. So if we try this again, go like that, and go like that, and go like that. So this gives us a little bit of a downtown area, with the train station being the main access, but also I think there are trams that should be running through here, like this one here. And then on this one can be commercial, and on the other side can be residential. And I'll just leave some space for the abutment for that bridge. And I think in this suburb we're gonna go with all large homes in the beginning. Actually, I was thinking to myself about doing the row houses along here. So I might do that along this road, at least up to here. I do want the American row houses, but I might go for the European 
low density houses just to change it up a little bit as I feel like the rest of the city has been getting a little bit samey because there isn't much options. Okay the terrain differences are actually quite pronounced here so I might go for this option. And I do wish there was an easy way to block off the zoning that didn't require putting a path down everywhere because sometimes that just doesn't make sense. But we'll do this anyways and then zone up along this street. So that one is way too steep. And that's what I wanted, a different variety of building sizes. And some of the corners of these lots are a bit awkward, but I think we're just going to leave that for the most part, as most of it seems to look okay. We might also add in the odd office building here and there, as well as if we do houses like this on here, then we'll see how things are likely to turn out. And we'll do some sort of office tucked in this little back area and a row house in this spot here. So I don't know how that's going to look when it actually builds out, but for now this seems to give a little bit of different options everywhere and we can fill it in with trees a bit later on. And to finish off this end of the downtown area I thought I'd just zone in the last little bits which includes houses here and some commercial or something along the street. And I've been trying to go for a variety of building sizes although a lot of them are very much the same just so we have a little bit of variety but too much most of them are all the same size or especially the ones I zoned in first. And so after going through and adding commercial down this main street I decided to add five high density commercial buildings. For this I use the European style as that has like four story buildings and five story buildings rather than some unusual looking ten story buildings that the American theme has. And for now I think this kind of works for this area. I wish they were perhaps one or two floors shorter but I don't want just like a low density area along here either so had to make some compromises in that regard. Anyway now that we've done the main street of this area we should look at working on the rest of the town. I think right where this town sign is I'm going to put in a little park here just to sort of make it so that there is something to do here I guess because currently there's not much. Let's see if we've got a small playground that'll fit nicely in there somewhere and then what else do we have? We got like a skate park or something. That's too large to fit there though the skate park. So we'll go for we'll just go for the dog park and then surround the rest of this area with some trees and then over time these will grow in to something a bit better looking. So I like to start off with the oaks because they grow up to be quite big. I do wish you could make them slightly go over the road but you can't. I think that'll do for oak. Then if we come through particularly down here but we can just mix these hickory trees in amongst the oak trees and then just scatter them around the place on the side if possible. So this is how I choose to deal with all these awkward empty spaces. 
I have been doing the same thing in City Skylines 1, so this isn't exactly a new trick. It's just a reusing an old trick, but with a lot less alternative options, I guess, in City Skylines 2. So that'll do for this side of the road. And then we can look at expanding out the residential areas, but I'll go through and delete all these trees first so we can start with a fresh clean slate. So now we can come through here and start zoning up the main houses in this town. I think I will also change some of these lots close to the downtown border to being row houses rather than individual homes. So we've got one lot of row houses in and I also have to be careful about what the terrain is wanting to do with these because with that sloped road there it looks like they might fit in a bit awkwardly but we'll see and then maybe one more block out but this time they can face this street so we've got that and then from this road onwards can be smaller houses and Again, we still have a lot of terrain differences in this area. So it'll be interesting to see how that pans out in the long run when we expand out much further. So now I'm just going through and zoning up all these houses. I sped up this clip quite a bit, but I'm leaving on the edge of the areas where we're putting the houses. So I'm leaving a few gaps and things so it looks like the town is still naturally growing and not all the roads are completely filled out and now i've zoned up half of this new town area and then we can move over to this side so i think at least within this part of the town my best option is to run the railway line straight through to this road and then beyond there can be an issue for another time so if we take this here and so that should get us to there plus 0 0.8 isn't that bad but what i might do just because i know what is coming for this line is take it down a little bit just touch because I don't want to exceed my 1% gradient that I've always been aiming for. So if I continue this along a little bit further, or actually I might just retake that because that's probably otherwise too short of a distance to get any meaningful gradient out of that. So if we go to here, and then it is a matter of taking this and just making the fork in the track really nice and gentle. So let's see if we go to there and then come back in. I think for this one the best option might just be a single curve or something like this. And then I came over and attempted to put a bridge over this road. Unfortunately that didn't work as the terrain differences were just a bit too extreme for my liking to fit a bridge in there. Uh, so now we're just making this side road into like a cul-de-sac with a small alley just serving a few houses off the edge here to try and maximize the use of this space and then just extending out the road network a bit more and adding in a few more houses along this road actually i think we do need to have some sort of main road across this here because otherwise there's going to be no connection for quite a way and it's not ideal so five percent grade is manageable and this is a minus 13 so what I could actually do from this point is rebuild the bridge to about here then have it come down okay that's never gonna get anywhere close to the main road in a reasonable distance given the constraint circumstances of this I think a 10% grade would be acceptable so that's started to head back 
downhill, and that's far too steep. So what we can do here is break this one off here, build the road all the way down to here. Whatever this is, is going to have to do because we can't really get it any better. And if we take this road again, we might just restart it and come through at 90 degrees. Okay, here we go. We now have something. It is a bit of a mess, but blame the railway line, not uh, the person building it, right? And now with the bridge laid out and the road network kind of sorted out here, I decided it'd be a good idea to add a little walking path in amongst this otherwise uh, to be unused space. And that connects pretty centrally into sort of the town centre of this uh, separate town. And then here just creating the bridge over the road that was disconnected because of the railway line and the gradients and things. And trying to make it not connect at such a sharp angle, so kind of creating this little S-bend here to gradually come down the slope. And then zoning up the houses on the sort of main town side of the railway line. And in this section here, I decided to create a little sort of subdivision road uh, since the houses would otherwise be right up against that bridge and there was a little bit of space left over and you kind of want to maximize all the space that you can. Uh, and then just another little city block of houses on the sort of main downtown side of the rail line with that main road kind of cutting through there. And then we're moving over to the other side of the railway line and I'm just skipping through all this zoning up of all these buildings but decided to zone mainly along those two main roads that have the bridges going over the rails and just leaving in a few gaps to sort of emulate how the town might be growing although we'll build here in the future but it just sort of gives a less harsh edge to the city. And then the last little section was zoning in a few houses in this area that has the rail line cutting through it near the river. And this way it looks more like a growing city rather than just a square box zone in area. But it seems that we do now have a power shortage which is something I noticed earlier on but was kind of crossing my fingers hoping that it wouldn't get to the stage yet. I think for now what I'm going to do is simply just put down a transformer station and connect it that way for the sake of this episode at least. But we now have this town all set up and I think that that is going to be it for this episode. I think we've made some good progress and have also made it look as if it's expanding rather than just being a square box, uh, which is a little bit of a waste of time because I plan on expanding out further in this direction on the side of the river, but for now it kind of creates a gentle edge to the city. And with that said, it's now the end of the episode, so if you've enjoyed this one, make sure to leave a like and comment if you have any thoughts about this episode, how the town's laid out and everything else, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.